Look at this beautiful family sitting here today. Welcome to our Go Moment. I want to introduce you to the Xylers who are serving in Cambodia. Go ahead, Brett. All right, hi, my name is Brett Zyler. I'm Rebecca Zyler. This is Silas, our youngest. Go ahead. I'm Nadia. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm Josiah. I'm Gabriel. This is Gabriel. This is Gabriel. <laughs> We've got a sixth grader, right? Yes. A sixth grader, a four-year-old, a first grader. Yep. And Silas was born in, I guess, August, August right? Yeah. Yep, August, yeah. August. So these guys have been uh, serving in Cambodia for, they did a two year, they are missionary uh, associates, but they are going full term, three year commitment. They're getting ready to leave in March. In Jesus' name, they're yeah, like no. at 99%. <laughs> um, but I wanted Brett to tell you the most beautiful story because a family, we don't get many moments like this where a family is serving overseas and they value their family. And he, I want Brett to tell you the sweetest story he told me just a few minutes ago. Brett, talk yeah, about it's, uh, family and missions. It is, family and missions is really important because it's all or nothing. Yeah. Um, it's not, in no way possible is that, you know, a mom and dad are called to missions or just mom is a missionary or just dad. It's your entire family receives a missionary call. Yeah. Um, we are all missionaries um, overseas. And, you know, um, we've really tried to instill that in our kids. And I, and I realized I had um, when a couple Sundays ago, Gabriel ended up at a, a church. We were, we were at a church. He went to Sunday school. And after the church service, the Sunday school teacher pulled me aside and was like, Brett, I have to tell you, um, you know, I knew who you guys were. And I during the during the, the prayer time, you know, for prayer requests, I said, we have to pray for Gabriel's mommy and daddy because they're missionaries. And um, Gabriel got really upset during <laughs> that statement. And he stood up and was like, excuse me, but I'm a missionary too. <laughs> So he was really upset at his story. teacher. Mm -hmm. So the teacher had to, instead of the having written the Xylers up mm -hmm. on the prayer request, she had to write Gabriel's name <laughs> up there too, that uh, that he was a missionary also. So I'm like, okay, I think we've gotten that into our kids' hearts, which makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, one of our purposes for Go Moments is we really want to hear the stories of how God moves in people's lives, what drives them to fulfill their destiny, what drives someone to live out that Go Moment, to go and do something and make a difference. And so um, I wanted you to meet the family. We're gonna take a, a moment and segue and have a conversation with Brett and his lovely wife, Rebecca, here in just one second. So Brett, Rebecca, tell us what you've been doing the last couple of years. It's been, I remember meeting you, I think it's been four years ago. We couldn't remember if you're, I think you had an infant at that time or you're just getting ready to have uh, your third child, Gabriel. Tell us what's been going on. Tell us how your experience was in Cambodia. People would, would really want to know about that. Um, our first term was really interesting. We um, had a lot of focus just on trying to learn the language. So we mm -hmm. went to language school. Um, Cambodia has the longest alphabet in the world. Um, so trying to learn how to speak the language is wow. a huge... how long? How many letters? We don't know. <laughs> True story. <laughs> I, really? I think you don't know? No, I graduated <laughs> language school and I think there are 72 letters. Yeah. We found oh, a different answer. Because I asked yeah. all my all my teachers gave me a different number. They have wow. so many letters they that yeah. they're not even, <laughs> there's some letters they don't really use anymore. Yeah, so depending on the teacher, depending on, like I got a different number. So we're going with 72. We That's think fascinating. 72. I'm yeah. sorry I interrupted. No, it's no. okay. It's, it's, a fun, it's a fun Real life fact. fact. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, learning the language was a is a huge part. Brett was able to meet with um, some of the national church leadership and being able to speak the language is really key. Yeah. So that um, taking the time to do that was a big thing. We're going to be learning language, working on that continually. Um, we were able, we really went to Cambodia with open hands. We were actually were not entirely sure what it was that God had called us to Cambodia to do. Mm -hmm. um, I you know I'm a registered nurse, so I ended up doing some medical trips. We went up uh, river and we're helping in some of the villages with some medical teams that would come in. Mm -hmm. um, so we did some stuff like that. Brett was able to preach in the English service of a Khmer church, um, and really just trying to build 
uh, relationships with the National uh, Assemblies of God of Cambodia leadership. And we really went to them and just kind of asked them, what is it that you are looking for your missionaries to do? Um, mm, what, how can we best, question. yeah, yeah that's how can we best question. serve you? Mm -hmm. And and we were just kept praying and praying and praying because we, we really didn't go with like this idea or this preconceived plan of we're going to go to Cambodia and do this. Um, and they said, really, the heart of the Assemblies of God of Cambodia is to see uh, churches planted in places where the church has never been. Um, so mm -hmm. there's 10 provinces in Cambodia, province equaling kind of like how we have states here, 10 provinces where there's never been a church wow. ever in the history of uh, Christendom. So uh, they are looking for um, missionaries to go in and to try to get a church started. And as soon as we were kind of told that, um, we really felt like the Holy Spirit just kind of confirmed that to yeah. us. That church planting. Yeah. 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 We never planned on being church planters. Yeah. I was a children's pastor. I was just going to say really yeah. quickly, you had a pretty cool testimony of how God spoke to you yeah. about going from a children's pastor for eight years yeah. to missions. Yeah. We were in Lancaster, PA. Um, at the same church, mm -hmm. eight years as a kid's pastor there and uh, never planned on being a missionary. I planned on sending my wife on missions trips because she felt she called became to the missions. Nurse to do missions. I she's read that. a mission. Yeah. I mean, like, she's that. an RN so yeah. that she could do missions work. I'm like, yeah. okay, God, this is great. Um, I'm going to just preach and teach BGMC and missions to our children. Gotcha. And, you know, Rebecca can do medical missions and mm -hmm. that'll be fine for our mm -hmm. family, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but we had a family from Cambodia as a part of our church. I had their kids in my ministry. And I was leading worship one Sunday morning with our children. And as soon as I looked at this little girl from Cambodia, all the kids in front of me weren't my kids anymore, but wow. a room full of Cambodian children. So yeah. um, I went home and was really spiraling out of control for quite a while <laughs> um, about that. Didn't know what to do about that except yeah. to pray mm -hmm. and not to talk to Rebecca. <laughs> so it took me six weeks. I bet in your no, heart. I, I, I bet like, in your I, heart as I long as you can. I can't. So it took me six weeks to get enough courage to yeah. talk to her about it. Yeah. But yeah, so that was our that was our call uh, to go and we went uh -huh. and and so yeah, now it's a, a different So when he focus. talked to about to you about it, what was your response? It made some things make sense because I just thought he'd been acting so weird. We'd gone yeah. we'd, we'd no, gone away real. like for our anniversary uh -huh. or something. And I was like, I think he wanted to tell me so many times and he uh -huh. just he didn't. I was like, Yeah, are we okay? Is our marriage okay? Yeah. Like I knew something was up. Uh -huh. As soon as he told me though, I felt like the Holy Spirit really just confirmed that in my heart. This yeah. this is a call to missions. Like yeah. we know, yeah. like it's like, mm -hmm. wow, I've been waiting for this. Like, yeah. you know, because so for you is that desire yeah. fulfilled, yeah. you know. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That's exciting. So, well, um, you know, our church supports this couple. We're so grateful for your support. And um, we look forward, you're heading out for three years after yeah. this this term, you're at 99%. So yeah. what's your projected date and what does that look like for your family? Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. So yeah, we're, um, we're looking to head out of here pretty soon. Um, we'll be heading back to the capital uh, in Phnom Penh for a Phnom short Penh, time yeah. okay. um, because we have to really get ourselves established. We have to get a speed to light vehicle. We are okay. so, so excited. I just talked to the yeah. Pendel DYD yesterday. He okay. said our speed to light vehicle has been funded. So the youth really of this district say. are <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Um, oh, so he's fantastic. literally like, we are releasing your funds for March. So we are going to be exciting. able to get a vehicle. Yeah. Um, because that's a really big deal. Cause we're, where we're going. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be going to um, a province that's four and a half hours outside of the capital yeah. so um, so that means is, once is it a very month. remote or is yeah. it populated in where you're going yeah, or is, the, it, is it more rural like what what type of the province we're going to it's called Gaip mm -hmm. um, and it is on the Gulf of Thailand so there's some area that has some beach um, but the place that we're going to be is got a very high concentration of uh, Cambodians mm -hmm. and Buddhists mm -hmm. um, and, and, Muslims, and Muslims, which is rare in Cambodia. Yeah, wow. Because it's it? pretty much it's 94% Buddhist. Yeah. Wow. Um, but there's mm -hmm. little pockets of Muslim groups too, and mm -hmm. the province we're going to has a has a really strong Muslim population in addition okay. to a Buddhist population. Yeah. But no 
churches, no Christian, yeah. you know, no Christian you know so. Yeah. And where we're gonna be out there, like there, you know, there isn't a school for our kids, so we're going to be I was homeschooling. Ask, yeah. Is that why the homeschooling? Yep, we're yeah. doing okay. homeschooling and it's funny, you know, that's been an act of obedience. You know, I think just being willing to homeschool our kids and, um, you know, doing this together with our children has been um, just, it's all been part of the call of being willing yes. to go out to where there aren't resources. And, yeah. and, you know, that I think God uses all the different aspects of, you know, it's, he calls us and he equips us as we go. He uses all, all everything, you know, he's using the fact that I have some nursing background right. to feel more comfortable to go to mm -hmm. a place where there aren't, there there's, isn't, no doctors. there's no doctors, <laughs> there's not good health care. You yeah. know, he's, um, you know, even in just trying to dis disciple our own children, using this children's ministry background yeah. of we're going to be discipling our own kids, you know, and there's just um, God just being really faithful with all those pieces. What is, as I'm, I'm sitting here listening, I, I, I'm thinking to myself, so to you guys, what is the most important ingredient that you see is, is really necessary for this journey into really unknown territory? No, no real support. I mean, you're going somewhere virtually planting a church. What is the one thing that you see is most important that you're going with? Um, okay. Um, first couple thoughts. First thing is, um, you have to know that, you know, that, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that you're Triple. doing, yeah. Do you like, uh -huh. yeah. um, so the, people talk about the call yeah. a lot, you know, people yes. in ministry, um, you, you have to know that you're mm -hmm. doing what God's called you to do. Yeah. Um, because you know, on the hard days, you have to have something rock solid to go back to. Well, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. Um, yeah that cause... you're not going to just run away. Yeah. Um, and Cambodia mm -hmm. is one of those places that just in our limited, I mean, we were only there two years, but I can't, I don't even know the amount of couples and families we saw, um, even in a two year period, just give up and leave. Yeah. Um, it kind of chews people up and spits them out again. You know, it's um, a hard place for sure. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have to know that you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other thing I think that's vitally, vitally important in missions, especially going out to places like a never reached area where, mm -hmm. you know, Satan's going to come at your family. Like there's no church there. There's only a, we found a couple of Christians there, okay, um, which is amazing. Um, but there's no church and there's never been a church. And mm -hmm. so it's like we found a couple of people that are claiming to be Christians. It's like, okay, maybe we can start building relationships with right, them right. and start growing mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. You know, where we're talking a whole province and there's like, you know, 10 people who say that they know, believe in Jesus. So it's like, okay, but even that was fascinating to yeah, me. Yeah, you're so like, great. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> we got you know, two. Like, like, <laughs> no, that was a big deal because these, pla big deal. these places are, you know, never mm -hmm. reached areas. Mm -hmm. So, um, but they've mm -hmm. been people who've moved in, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so the other piece though is what I wanted to say is um, really focusing on the health of your family. Yes. Um, yeah. Because families fall apart in the mission field yes. a mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm. um, so really focusing on our marriage is mm -hmm. a really big deal. Marriages mm -hmm. fall apart in the mission field. Yeah. Families fall apart in the mission field yeah. um, because there's such a strong attack. Yes. Um, because mm -hmm. I feel like that's an area that Satan really does try to attack intensely. Because sure, sure. mm -hmm. if you can get your family or your marriage yeah. to fracture, yeah. you're off the field, you're gone, you're defeated. Yeah. Well, isolation, aren't, aren't yeah. we, we've, we've actually seen it from COVID. Yeah. Just isolation. Um, when I when I was hearing you talk, I, I, really, I, I really heard this one thing, and, and it really is a gift of faith. Yeah. I mean, there are... Their faith, you know, is just, we're, we're to live that with God in every day. But I think there is a, a particular gifting of faith that the scriptures even talk about. And when I look at you two, I'm like, you have to go with that. That's the unshakable force. It's an unshakable nature of God is that real gift of faith. So, yeah. you know, fight for it. You yeah. kind of have to no, fight and for it, I was going to say that, though. That yeah. is something you have to yeah. continually yeah. be focused on it is um, because when you're yep. walking in faith that means you're automatically extremely uncomfortable yeah. because faith kicks in when you're outside of yourself otherwise 100%. you're walking in your own ability your own absolutely. strength absolutely and we're not absolutely i mean we're going to a place that you're not enough I got, no i'm like we're, you're we're, not we're enough way by over yourself. this is yeah. way over way over your head, head. <laughs> i think i, I think love that's something launching into the deep i think that you know something mm -hmm. that the devil will just kind of keep bringing up and try to keep mm -hmm. accusing you is bringing up your past, bringing up all your failures, bringing up all the things yeah. that you aren't and all yeah. the things that you've been. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think part of it is learning how to do the, you know, just a, a very uh, true spiritual warfare yeah. and being able to say, yeah. you know what, you're right. Maybe all those things are true, but Jesus covers me. 
Amen. You're going to have to take that up with Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus yep. covers my marriage and Jesus covers my children. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there is a lot of things to be afraid of there. There really yeah. are. You know, yeah. we're, we're sn snakes and tarantulas. I was just going to say bugs. bugs. <laughs> I was going to say bugs right away. No, <laughs> no, that alone. The, yeah, bugs, snakes, tarantulas, oh, yeah. all oh, the God. things. There's you just, might have some unusual pets at your house. Crazy diseases, <laughs> yeah. all this yeah, stuff yeah. that we're like, all the things that we inoculate against and yeah. vaccinate yeah. against here. It's there. It's yeah. there in full force. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But like, I yeah. think just knowing, you know, God, you're you're gonna have to sustain us. We are yeah. in over our head, but you're yeah. you're gonna be our you're yeah. gonna be the one who sustain that sustains us. You sustained us in the past. Yeah. You've been faithful to us in the past, mm -hmm. and we have to hold on to that and believe that in the future. Yeah. And that you and that uh, Jesus loves us. Amen. I think holding on to that, you really have to hold Absolutely. on to this love that Jesus loves mm -hmm. you, and that Jesus loves these people so much to send us to some place where people have never heard about Him. Um, he loves them, yeah. and that that is. That's what you have to hold And he to. loves our family too. And something we say yeah. to each other to remind each other yeah. is the safest place to be is where Jesus has called you to be. One so, so that's we why you hold have to on be to that. So yeah. even yeah. to say, like, you know, people be mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, we could never do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. We get that, we get told that all the time. And I'm For always sure. like, yes, you could. You mm -hmm. can do anything that God has asked you Amen. to do. And to be quite honest, like, you know, this whole thing of, uh, you know, I think it's safer to be in a third world country, in a remote province, in the center of God's will than it is to be in Pennsylvania outside of God's will. You know, I, like that, that covering of God's I grace follows yeah. you. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're obeying him and following him, and you don't have to be afraid if you're following the good shepherd's voice. Right, he's the shepherd, he's yeah. a good shepherd, he leads his sheep. So if he's leading you someplace and you're like, man, well that looks dark and scary, as long as you know you're following the good shepherd's mm -hmm. voice, he's, he's, he's got that grace covering on you. You can do what he asks you to do. Listen, this is a beautiful goal moment, a beautiful testament to what goal moments are all about. Being right in the center of God's will. It's not the place, no. it's the center of God's will. Yeah. You guys, thank you. Very, very wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, we want to pray with them real quick. I just, um, man, I, I feel, I never do this, do I? Um, but I want to pray for you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Lord, we just, we're just going to uh, agree together, Lord, for just an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you live large on the inside of them. You want to do the unimaginable in the natural. Lord, you are the God of the impossible. Lord, you're sending them on a path um, that is, is set apart for them to walk. And so, Lord, we just thank you for your provision. We thank you for unhindered faith. We thank you, Lord, that they're up for the challenge, that you're going to be reminding them by the Holy Spirit, turn left, turn right, go straight, that you're going to direct and order their steps. We pray for those people that they're gonna come in contact with, those relationships they're gonna build, those leaders that they're going to minister to. We thank you for the Word of God and its power. We thank you that the Word of God is like a blade. It just, it just cuts to the truth, and may they be the bearers of the truth to the Cambodian people. May people experience the power and healing and the divine nature of God at work. Lord, it's the church is the people, so may they just pour out their love, may they demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit, and may they walk in the strength and the awesome nature of God. Lord, be with them and their children. God, I thank you for a fresh eyes and a fresh sense and a fresh knowing of your voice and a voice of a stranger that they'll not follow at any time, at any place. Yes. And we thank you for your favor and those connections by the Holy Spirit and the rest of their money coming in, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Thank you, Pastor Polly. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us today. We will see you next time. God bless. Thank you.